we're all working independently. No one person controls this industry as much as they think they do. And we're all small participants that combine, we make up a, a big tool. And it's just trying to figure out how do you share technology and how do you use what you use and, and how do we make money off each other's stuff? Because if you had a varietal that had a demand and I was allowed to license it through my nursery, then I could provide it to cultivators that could then subsequently sell it, which is what I'm doing with, with Burner's Crew, where we know that the lemonade line is there everything coming out of Martin. Martin has the, the 11 acre campus over in Oakland. So that massive uh, facility that was the old naval base, the Safeway warehouses, that's, that's all Martin stuff. So you, you met Martin when you were sitting there. I think it's lemonade to stretch in the grove. I mean, all of our cuts we've seen, they're all stunted they, out. They, and, 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 a, and a lot of it is what we found when we went into it was virally, contaminate, virally contaminated. So when we did the first, so the first project we worked with on this was through Martin as the R&D because he said, listen, let me work with the product because I can push it through my facilities. Then I can move it on the end zone, but I'm having problems with it. So we go through and they say, well, this is all virally contaminated, which a lot of the stuff coming from there is virally contaminated. And then, so they scrub it. And then, so then Martin runs side-by-side -side trials to be able to say, what are we looking at? And the difference between the two cultivars is night and day. It should be because lemonade, I mean, if you just fix that. Yeah, you would be banging because it's got an ultra loud signature and it's got a built-in branding. And, and, and so, that's yeah, that's same, yeah, yeah, same, yeah, yeah. It's lemon, it, it, lemon pine salt, it's so and and it, and it and and unlike a lot of the monoterp lemons, it holds it all the way through a joint. Yeah. So it doesn't flare off. So it, it has a sesqui combination, the sesquiterpene combination, uh, terps that don't flare off under heat, more multi bonds. That's what gives you the enjoyment after the first hit. So people that smoke bongs or vapes, they have a different situation than those that actually burn it, because the heat is burning off that that complexity as you go forward to what you're left with is only heavily multi-bond uh, terpenes at the end of it. And the lemonade holds it through the piece. Just, just like just like the perp. I always wondered, you know, when I was, we were moving perp like crazy. I was there pre-perp when perp, nobody wanted perp, nobody wanted black little pounds. Next thing you know, nobody wants anything but black little pounds. And so perp comes out and actually wipes out most of the genetic diversity in a lot of California, because if you weren't moving perp, you weren't moving weed. But what made perp perp was that there was that blunt revolution that was occurring. So the blunt was coming out in full form. And perp had a high sesquiterpene combination that allowed you to hold a flavor all to the end. And at that time, cannabis was still being flipped through the windows of cars more than through storefronts. And when you looked at the baggie, it had a distinctive orangey, carroty looking hair with a, 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 a heavy purple tone, but it was a, a bright light royal purple. It wasn't the typical heavy perp of uh, like a purple kush, even though it's related to purple kush genealogically. So Purple Kush, is the, the, all these perps come through Purple Kush as a progenitor because we can track it genetically. You can see the link on the DNA line. But it had a radically different quality of uh, mouth appeal. And so lo and behold, it's recognizable in a bag. It holds in a blunt. And it's great Kool-Aid. And, and at the time, most of the ghettos are where the stuff was pushing heavy. And I'm from the hood on the East Coast. And so great Kool-Aid is what we all drank. You didn't have multi-flavored Kool-Aids. And so lo and behold, grape is popular, holds in a blunt recognizable in a deal, all of a sudden you have this magic little trifecta of things that come together that create a billion dollar variety. And it's trying to put together those same kind of combinations. And so now you have, you know, the, the OG, but OG isn't going to go anywhere because OG has an incredible, aside of branding, it has an exceptionally high impact because Amir seen as the anesthetic. And it also has an exceptional complexity within the line where as you go through it, People are happy with it. If you get a good quality OG and you consume it pretty much, you really don't have a high ceiling to it. Every time you smoke it, you get a very similar effect and you're happy. As long as it's one of the OGs, it's really not a diluted watered down. And even, yeah. and even though the, the, the old OGs, the originals, were running around 17, 18% when you scope them, because me and Josh were talking in, in uh, Carpinteria, and I said, he came to the lecture I gave in Carpinteria about uh, genetic mapping. So about... Two months ago, month and a half. Was it uh, the seed to soil? Yes. Fuck, I wanted to go to that. So we went I was to that. To be there. Oh, it was you were Scott from Living Soil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Scotty Cressive. Yeah. And Scotty Granola. Right? Yeah. And so and so and then you had then you had uh, Steve Cantwell from uh, the the No Till, right? Yeah. And so they asked me to come in to kind of tie the package together and then to say, look, this is where you're going to go with all these technologies. And so you come in with your supplemental greenhouses. 
and then you come in with uh, the no-till situation where you're getting biological because really the cost of production is low yeah. once you're able to get this biological circle completed. And Cantwell's doing killer in uh, Vegas with his no-till operations because he's not losing any of the product and having to blow it. And then you got Scotty Granola doing your predicative testing to say, listen, when I see microbe levels here, I know problems are about to be present there. And so even though, and he's, he's one of Elaine Ingham's like, you know, disciples, and Elaine says you can't use science to predict, but you kind of can. Yeah. And so even though a true scientist won't do that because scientist is study, not prediction, you can make some pretty good goddamn predictions based off of the science. Yeah, it lets you allow it, and, well, and, and I like it because it creates the warning situations. And you got, you got, and, and Scott Sharp. <laughs> And he's a, a intelligent guy who's involved uh, most definitely with cultivators. And a lot of these people coming in aren't involved in cannabis production, cannabis cannabis Jesus. sourcing. The aloe vera part is what are you guys using it for? We're using oh, it, yeah. and we I, I'm using aloe vera in terms of wedding agents. Yeah. Yeah. Fire, yeah. Wedding agents. Yep. So, you, but you were talking about close to THC level. Mm-hmm. And you were saying that maybe you only test for 17, 19 percent. But the, the, the doesn't the Mercer rate, right? Yeah, the, but the effect is phenomenal because what we know is that really, numer I have uh, I, I I was messing around with Gene from uh, Mean Gene from Mendocino, right? Yeah. So Mean Gene buddies, and so he lets me access his cherry line, but it's his the it's his, age. but I have the lime males too. But I mean the the cherry that he uses in the lime, and he says, hey, listen, here's the seed stock, just don't let it out because it's it's it is my shit. Yeah. So it'll it'll send somebody right into my lines. And so I said, sweet. So I'll work with it and I'll use it as progenitor stock for breeding. So I pull out a cutting of it that is just as cherry as one could humanly hope for. It comes out at like 11 and a half, 12 percent. But I found that it's perfect for people that, so we enjoy, like, I, like, I like something with a little more power to it. But in terms of the quality, the fact it just resonates, but it lets me use it for my girlfriend and for my buddies that can't smoke high potency, devastating cannabis. Because they're able to get the effect they want and not get blasted off the top of their shoes. And I get it because the flavor profile is fantastic. Yeah. And so I was talking to Josh, we met at Carpinteria, and we were talking about, and I didn't know who he was when we first met. So we, we just meet each other and we're talking about numerics. And we started talking about old OGs. And I didn't know who he was at the time. And I said, all my old OGs that I got from Mandel from, you know, like late 90, um, I said, they're all coming in around, you know, 17, 18 points. That's what he said. He goes, THC? yeah, and he goes, he said, my stuff is coming in never over 20. He said, I've never hit over 20 with my foundation stock. And then he I have, hit 25 and, 27 on and then I have, I, and so, well, you, we can, we can, we can tweak it because we can drive our humidity levels far down and I can get a higher trichome density and I can also dry the plant more. And, and depending on what lab I use, I can make these numbers. But if I'm looking at it, for a period of time, and I see the graph, I say, whoa, that Topanga cut that I picked up from Mandel, and then that, that we call the SFV cut, those two lemon lime, the, the two bookends of what he thought OG were, that he got probably out of you guys at that time. Yeah, it was the ugly sister and the original cut. Yes, yes, the ugly sister within Topanga. Yeah, the ugly and, sister but, was what we got for the seed, but mm -hmm. we the seed that never looked like the original cut. No, but it works killer for hybridization for and, outdoor and because it has a... Potent. It has a and faster it's trigger. The yeah, 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 yep, yep. And it's a faster trigger outside, so we use it in breeding projects to, to upgrade what we want is what we call fuel designations, but with a faster trigger time. Because if I can get the if I can get the OG to come in around that first week of October versus the third week of October, I'm killing it because I got yeah. two weeks to process and get it into the market. Yeah. And so he and I were chatting about it and he goes, Yeah, so he gave me some of the stuff that he had grown. He goes, Hey. This is all uh, stuff from my, my original stuff. And he goes, and I never get over 20 with this one. And so we started talking about all the, all the swings because now we're looking at OGs that are in 32s. But that's all selfed in and selected out. But that's where you start to see such a huge propensity for PM problems, pathogenic issues, well, we don't even grow it anymore. viral I issues. Cut, mm -hmm. I just keep it for breeding purposes. Totally. And I keep it so we don't ever not have it. No, no, because it's, it's, it's a foundation line. But it, it, literally, I can, I can grow it all the way through and not get a PM, but I have to work my ass off. Yeah, you, biological. I have to work my ass off to keep it super healthy. Uh -huh, I have to burn sulfur burners the first week, maybe. Yeah, to keep any kind of, any yeah, kind of, I mean, yeah. i got to do every fucking preventative you could think of mm -hmm. to finish that harvest off with an A1 type thing. And so that's, too much work. yeah, no, it's, and it doesn't make it profitable for no. you. And if you make any mistakes at all.
I'm doing, I'm doing this old reservation skunk project. So yeah. I've been collecting skunk from around the world that's from I the early 80s. That so bad. Me too. Remember it was just skunk balls. Yeah, no, the chunks. Yeah, the, the, and, the and, and I want to see the range and tones. And they all got wiped out because there was no charcoal filtration. So I used to run these hot operations using ozone technology I used to get from hospitals. So I went into the hospital and said, how do you guys clean up your shit? Ozone. And they said, yeah. they use ozone. So there was a company in Texas, Sonazir, that was a commercial ozone company. And I would bring in the ozone tech and I would blow all my ducts and vents as I vented them out of these houses. Yeah. That's because if you, let the, if you let the ozone in the room, it, it'd wipe out all the plants. We yeah. use dog we use manure on the front lawn until we got yeah, filters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have, you have like everything two possible. Weeks of, two weeks of manure is like the lawn would be covered. Yeah, yeah. But <laughs> kill a grass, though. Yeah, Your yeah, lawn looked burn. awesome. Totally burnt. Yeah, yeah, and so, and so we, we, we end up wiping out these skunk situations. And, then, and as a smoker, I'm, I'm, I'm getting bored, right? I mean, I'm smoking everything on the fucking planet, but I'm getting bored. And I said, you know what? I wanted something from the past that had been selected as smoke for generations from people from other countries and then put together these, these varietals. And I said, well, how do I access it? So I started going into a uh, cruise over in Europe that the stock had left uh, Northern, Northern California in the 80s and went over to Europe for holding. And then I was able to mine it back. So they would ship it back to me from Europe. And then I started doing some recovery work for people that had old stock that they had kept forever and they were having pathogenic issues and they couldn't get it. And they said, listen, we, we don't want to give it up, but we're going to lose the varietal. If we give it to you, would you clean it? And then you, you can play with it. And so it started letting me get into these skunks. So I go set up to do a whole breeding project and I get ready to do all my work. 